All right, ladies and gentlemen. So the first thing that we're going to do is we want to determine what our end behavior is. All right. So what we have right now is we have to have a polynomial, and we want to determine the end behavior. Now we wrote down that whole leading coefficient test and all that kind of stuff, so you guys can use that. All right, to be able to kind of help you out determine what your leading coefficient, your degree is going to be, and um, and what the end behavior is going to be. Now, let's just go and look at. Um, for A, what we're going to do is just determine the end behavior. All right. Now, when determining the end behavior, we can use uh, we can use our leading coefficient test. All right, to look at this. But we can also I just want you guys to kind of look at the graph and kind of dis and kind of see what's happening. All right. So what we have is we have a y-axis and our x-axis. Right. And actually, we're not going to we're going to call this a function. We're going to call this our f of x axis. The same thing as our y axis. It's our output axis. Now, as my x values go to the right, right, what happens to the f of x values, the output values? So as I go to the right, so as I move along this graph to the right, where do the y coordinates go? Where do they, where do they approach? Up, down? Right, left. As I keep on going to the right with the x coordinates, where do the y coordinates or the f of x coordinates go? Down. down. And how far down do they go? Infinity. All the way down to negative infinity. So what we could say is we could say that the graph falls right. <laughs> or more mathematically, we can say as the x coordinates approach infinity, so that means as my x coordinates go towards infinity, my f of x coordinates, my output coordinates, approach negative infinity. All right. Then let's look at the other way. So now, as my x coordinates go to the left, so for each x coordinate of each one of these points, go to the left. Where do my f of x points go? So they go out and out, and they keep on going. And then where do they end up? Go down to negative infinity again. So you could say the graph. The end behavior, it's going to fall right, and it also falls left. Or mathematically, as x approaches negative infinity, so as my x values go to negative infinity, the f of x values go down to negative infinity. So you could say x, or f of x, your output value, approaches negative infinity. All right? So you guys just need to understand that it's going to fall left and fall right. All right, the next thing we need to do for part B is going to be estimate um, the zeros, or how many zeros we have. All right. So when we estimate the zeros, remember the zeros, or the roots, or the x-intercepts of our function. Remember, that's going to be your x-intercepts. So we need to determine how many x-intercepts do we have on this graph. Well, we have one right there, and we have one right there. So we have two zeros. All right. Now, the last question asks us is determine um, whether our graph represents an odd degree or an even degree polynomial function. So what we're going to need to do is look at this. And this says two zeros, right? When you guys have an even degree function, you're always going to have an even number of zeros or none at all. When you have an odd degree function, you're always going to have an odd number of zeros or none at all. And I'll write that down so you guys can have it down in a second. So for C, since we have two zeros, are we going to have an even degree function or an odd degree function? Mm -hmm. Even degree. And there we go. That's it. Yes. Because that's the end behavior as x goes to the left, and that's the end behavior as x goes to the right. OK? It's just going to ask for the end behavior. There's two end behaviors. You can see there's two arrows where the graph ends up, right? Yeah. It ends up going to negative infinity and negative infinity. It depends if it's going to the right, if you're going x values to the right or to the left. That's why you need to include both end behaviors. Yes? If you had an odd zero, then yes, you would have an odd degree function. We're going to talk, we're going to, we're going to, we'll go over an odd one next. OK? Now, we'll talk about this. So, Ladies and gentlemen,